Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Um, yes, uh, I will give you a talk on a rather uh, exotic, exot which is rather exotic on IT security exchange. Uh, how to do security on the wireless physical layer. Now, this, this talk is, uh, the results which I will present in this talk, they are a part of our recent um, research project. It's called Secret Key Generation for Low Power Wide Area Networks. I want to thank, in, at this point, our cooperation partner, Microtronics, which is a local MT unit communication solution provider. And for the financing, uh, Austrian Research Promotion Agency. Uh, now, the points which I will deliver you today uh, are first of all, I will talk about a little bit uh, on, let's say, advanced attacks on IoT, IoT systems. So I will really start from the physical layer. What can you do against IoT systems on a phys physical layer? And then I will um, introduce you a way to do key management using wireless physical layer. So there's attacks and then protection, so to speak. And uh, because this, this topic is rather new, it's, it's more in, in the basic research. Uh, I will try to uh, make my best to explain uh, and introduce to the experimental result, results, let's say, on understandable way. And I will then finally uh, give you the overview what challenges there are to make this, make this uh, uh, research really work in the practical applications. Okay, talking about uh, physical layer attacks on IoT devices. This paper was published last year. It's already gotten over 100 citations. And for uh, researchers, that's kind of a success. For researchers, that's good news. For, um, for the public in general, that's that's not not nice. It's it's kind of a, uh, big news. It's not nice. Um, anyway, the the point is, uh, this paper, in my opinion, it brings uh, kind of well uh, the um, issues uh, on on the. Uh, issues of IoT, IoT devices which have, might happen on, on physical layer to the top. Right? And on this paper, um, the scientists find out the following. Uh, given uh, the IoT devices they looked at, Philips, Philips Hue Labs, which are connected with SIGPEE. Uh, uh, given those devices, they were able to uh, extract all the cryptographic elements uh, using rather novel side channel attacks. And they note they are cheap, uh, well, easily obtained. Uh, I mean, the equipment, you don't need to anymore invest tens of thousands of euros to lab equipment. You can actually uh, order the attack equipment from online, pay 200 euros, and you're in the game. And as soon as, as they got uh, the cryptographic elements, they can... In Practic practically do anything they want with the IoT device. And they showed that it's possible to even to create a worm which then hops in the uh, uh, SIGBee mesh network 
And if there's enough ZigBee devices in some space, then this nuclear reaction takes place. It kind of uh, um, kind of uh, nuclear reaction, and then the worm spreads all of those devices. And of course, we we could uh, argue that the reason is because there was no key management or that the key management, secret key management, was not well done. And given that such scenarios would become uh, more and more popular, let's say, or they would happen more often in next years, then there might be some implications uh, which are not just that uh, the toaster, toaster spread 10 minutes instead of three minutes. But if, if it happens that uh, attacker might get get control over hundreds of devices, then he could, uh, let's say, switch on and off uh, mains, connected devices, street lamps, who knows, and cause stress to power uh, network. Uh, and there's some further examples. Um, I'm not really sure if Oan and Tetze would would ever find find out uh, if if a uh, malfunctioning car uh, is because of a firmware poison firmware maybe maybe in the future hopefully um, third example would then be because we are talking about wirelessly connected IoT devices which get captured the wireless interface gets also captured. So the attacker might go and redefine the wireless device as a jammer. And because of the wireless signaling takes usually place on uh, so-called ISM bands, they are unlicensed bands which everybody can use. You could just, for example, take the IoT device and block uh, VLAN because VLAN is also signaling on those bands. So just as a motivation um, to my research or our research, uh, which is then uh, concentrating on the answer to the question, how, how could we um, perform uh, key management or key re enable key refreshment for IoT devices uh, which use uh, LoRa signaling. And LoRa is a, a relatively fresh uh, wireless um, protocol, uh, in fact, the LoRa One. And we would like to do this a little bit differently. We say, uh, we are not relying on the cryptographic elements like Diffie-Hellman, but instead we, we try, try to look at on the physical, really on the re physical um, properties of uh, wireless channel. Yeah. And this is, this is now the, the really new, new concept uh, which we try to progress forward. And the main idea is actually given on, on, this, on this slide, on this figure. Uh, I would say we would call this, this true uh, a little bit slowly that everybody can catch up. First of all, uh, we, need, um, we need to understand uh, that the properties of wireless channel are random. For example, in this room, uh, you would maybe say, okay, we are all, all standing, st sitting still. Nothing happens for, let's say, wireless signals. But as I see that some, some of you, you are constantly a little bit turning, turning around, this is then the randomness. Yeah? 
the, you are constantly creating by very, very little movements, randomness in this room in the sense of wireless signals. Right? If we could see the reflections of the wireless signals in this room, there would be a lot of going on. Yeah? And that's the premise. That's the, one of the fundamental premises was enabling this, uh, this whole secret key agreement, randomness of wireless channel. And now, given that we taking that for granted, because uh, I don't have time to go into the theoretical details of a channel, wireless channels, given this, and then the fact that we have um, two devices, this is typical LoRaWAN scenario where we have embedded node, which is con connected to concentrator gateway, which just uh, redirects the wireless packets towards cloud. Well, there are two wireless devices, in fact. So uh, what happens is that we have bidirectional communication channel. That's, uh, that's a requirement. So the node sends, let's say, payload, a temperature, for example, towards concentrator. Concentrator sends acknowledgment back immediately or after some time window. And so they automatically record RSSI, receive signal strength value for each, uh, every packet that's de delivered automatically by the wireless modems. And because they are doing this ping pong communication fast enough, they see the same, almost the same RSSI values. Yeah, that's almost something that you could um, uh, try at home if you can put up an uh, ad hoc VLAN connection. You can just uh, move around in a room and actually verify this yourself pretty fast. Yeah. So this is how it looks like. In, in fact, then you could, you would, when I showed you this um, simple figure, you could almost say, okay, uh, it looks too good to be true. But in fact, what, what you see is then something like this. You see two time series which are symmetric, but not completely e equivalent. Uh, but with some sophisticated uh, algorithms, some which decide which of those RSC values becomes key bit one, which one then becomes key bit zero, the two uh, wireless devices are able then to extract binary stream, which is random, and which can be then used as a source for, let's say, a symmetric encryption. The good news is that uh, as long as no one is uh, uh, listening very close to one of those, one of the antennas, one of the two antennas, as soon as this information is not captured by the attacker, uh, I show you the results later in that case. Uh, if that's not the case, then uh, this kind of key agreement is um, information theoretically secure and it survives com quantum computer attacks or any kind of massive brute force attacks because it's based on, on the kind of secret information that's in the air. Um, good news is also that we have the wireless infrastructure already. VLAN models are everywhere. It's projected that the LoRaWAN, if it's really breaking through, and it looks like that, uh, there will be hundreds and thousands of devices but the thing is that the RSSI, for example, is embedded in those modems and those modems exist. And the, this, uh, the, what's also beneficial for our IoT applications when you're talking about the embedded devices, the algorithms which are there to uh, convert the measurements to keys are kind of uh, lightweight, suitable for embedded devices. But then devices, Sorry, challenges uh, are uh, really to make it work in every, each and every situation uh, in let's low power wide area networks. Make it practical, make it really work, show that it works. 
So that's one of our focuses. Now, a few words about LoRa technology. We mentioned that we are focusing in that direction only for this protocol. Um, it's targeted at uh, embedded devices for the uh, back end of IoT. Um, data rates are very low, kilobits per second. So we're talking about signaling like um, every five minutes a sensor value is transmitted to us cloud. It's optimized for low power and high range. Yeah, we, it's possible to, the records of LoRa signaling, they are in some very, very good propagation conditions. You can get even beyond 20, 30, 40 kilometers of reach. Yeah. If, you get, if you optimize your system with good antennas and so forth. And you can buy LoRa modems and put your network up yourself. So that's, that's pretty cool. LoRaWAN is, uh, the LoRa is more or less uh, defining the physical layer, the signaling and so forth. And the LoRaWAN is really then uh, defining the medium access, the network structure, uh, the classes of operation, class A for uh, battery driven nodes, and towards the class C, which is uh, for better data availability, continuous transmission and reception. And there you see a typical uh, set setting of a LoRa network connected to the cloud. And so the, the following results we, we got, these are this the first results we uh, got in, in this research project. And the first thing we wanted to know is uh, how does how does uh, the changing wireless channel condition, given that we are using LoRa signaling, which is at, and in some cases kind of slow, the uh, signals can take up to one second. Yeah, uh, is this a problem? That's one thing we want to find out, and if, in order to put up an uh, experiment, uh, we mounted uh, on the LoRa modem, this would be the LoRa, LoRa node, we put, put up uh, this kind of antenna tuning uh, where we just place a conducting element next to the antenna and let it rotate. So this way we get controlled, uh, control over the antenna properties and so uh, we can adjust, in fact, uh, how fast the channel changes. Yeah. And to give some uh, figure of merits, to, to get an idea how well our system works, we, we took some uh, uh, figure of merits, uh, typically used to evaluate the wireless key agreement. One of them is correlation, uh, which means how well do the two uh, RSSI, RSSI data sets correlate, whereas one would be perfect, zero would be uh, absolutely not perfect. Um, and then further uh, merits would be key agreement rate, means in person totally how many keys are correct uh, for the on the two devices after measurements and vice versa key disagreement rate, how many bits are wrong after, after this, um, this batch of measurements. As well as then how many keys uh, are there uh, after some measurements, uh, because we are doing some pre-correction, which is dropping out uh, bit, key bits which might be erroneous, so we are filtering of doing some kind of pre-filtering, pre-processing, and then we get a stream of uh, bits which are more, more probably correct. And for the randomness, which is uh, important, we, we uh, evaluated the approximate entropy. 
Um, and these are these are the scenarios which we evaluated. Uh, this, these are our uh, experimental measurement scenarios. The first one is uh, is the scenario with. Uh, um, controllable channel conditions. Then we went around in this building. In fact, we let with one of the modems in the first floor. We went around. We tested how how well the LoRa uh, signals can actually penetrate through the uh, thick beton walls around here. And then we went for forward and uh, we tested: Does this work when when there's no movement? Where the channel wireless channel doesn't change because I'm moving around, but because the environment changes between the modems, right? So, so that was those were then the scenarios three and four. And the fifth is uh, also very interesting: what happens when the attacker comes into play? So, um, these are then the fine. Findings which you find out. I, I suppose it makes sense to show this this slide. I just want to uh, condense the main points. You don't you need to pay too much attention on the uh, nice, colorful curves there. They are essential for the research, of course. But but the main point main point is uh, in Laura one, there's a parameter called sp spreading factor. Twelve means long wireless signals. Seven means short wireless signals. And what happens when you when you take spreading factor twelve is that your back and forth signaling gets just quite long. Yeah, when you transmitting some one hundred bits even or one hundred bytes, uh, yeah, bytes. Sorry, then it might ha happen that you are actually recording the recording time. Or the round trip time because becomes two three seconds, and if you think about what happens, what everything can happen during that time, then uh, it's understandable. And when we take the spreading factor twelve and we look at how many key bits are not uh, equivalent on the both sides. Uh, it becomes clear that because of this latency in measurements, the channel just the channel uh, changes maybe many times in between, and so the measurements are not symmetrical. They could be something. They could be fully uh, decorrelated, and therefore we get high key disagreement rate. Therefore, when the spreading factor is small, the round trip time is also very small, and we are, uh, there's less of a problem with the disagreement, key disagreement rate. Um, okay, I go a little bit further. I don't know how much time I have left. I hope enough. Um, On this slide, uh, I would I would suggest to pay attention on on first of all on the last last scenario on maybe on the on the approximate entropy. This is this kind of interesting. The last scenario is a static a static scenario where we uh, kind of harvested randomness from the nature, and if, when you compare the entropy, approximate entropy is just a value which which gives a, um, more or less hints how how uh, random the bit stream is. Then for uh, the last scenario, we have entropy very close to one, which means that we have uh, good confidence that our bit stream almost comes from a true random number generator, versus then uh, 
in a scenario four where there's less happening and the approximate entropy is, is smaller. So this is, in fact, the scenario which we build up. This is the static scenario five, where the devices are sitting still, but the antenna is put in the movement. So that's the trick here. We have constructed this. This is maybe the most secure antenna and the most cheapest antenna ever built, because this is just a um, jumper cable mounted into SMA. Uh, connector of, of the device. And it was windy day in St. Pölten, up there in Beats 5th floor. It's almost always windy. So that converts into this set, so you get a good idea how the measurements look like. Good randomness. Good source of secret keys. So um, what the attacker uh, what it means when we have eavesdropping attacker? Well, um, key agreement rate gives how many bits uh, are correct by the two nodes and how many b key bits are um, possessed by the attacker, which would be the car A uh, to E. And here you see, pay attention to, to the distance, the distance is zero. That means that the attacker is really placing his antenna or her antenna next to the legitimate antenna. It's real clue there. And you see, we still uh, have a difference of some 14%. So the attacker doesn't have all the bits. It's dangerous, but it's um, not impossible even in that that's situation to perform wireless um, key agreement. Okay, and then I will move on to conclusions. So up to our knowledge, we performed the wireless secret key agreement for the, with the LoRa signaling for the first time ever. Uh, this kind of uh, setting which you presented is uh, out of the box compatible with the class C LoRa 1. Um, for the challenges, uh, I would say the main challenge is to make it work for class A. And in class A, we have some restrictions on the reception windows, so we cannot do immediately uh, ping pong communication. So we need to um, uh, come up with a good solution in order to make this work uh, more or less everywhere, yeah. So, and that's one one point where we are working on right now. Um, packet collisions is one thing because in LoRaWAN there might be 100 devices per gateway. Certainly, packets co will collide at some point. We need to find out: can we still do wireless uh, secret key agreement there? And then, of course. Uh, uh, we want to break the world record of distance in in secret key agreement, which is uh, likely doable with with this kind of signaling. So that brings me to the end of the uh, presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have some. <laughs>